Hi there, how's it going? Are you good? Great. Here we have some silicon on the floor. Is it outdoor silicon? Is it indoor silicon? It's both. Wood glue, got some tools. And here we have the wooden panels I'll be using to make the SMD box I'm about to put together. Fresh from London, which is nice. Here we have top and bottom panels. Here we have the baffle and another panel behind it. So that's, it's gonna be a double baffle. That I think is the rear panel. Ah, we have also a side panel. Side, baffle, baffle. I'm baffled. I wasn't gonna do this, but I thought I might as well put the SMD into a box because that's uh, where it lives, isn't it? Right now it's homeless. So yeah, this box is gonna be, I think roughly 10 cubic foot, something like that. What's all that rubbish in the corner? 10? 11 cubic foot, something like that. Also, it's gonna be tuned to around 17, probably 16 hertz. What else? It should reach single digits. Also, my right hand kinda got tired. It's just me doing this. Got no other tools. Well, I've got that on the floor right there. Also, left hand again, uh, constructing the box and filming, and then constructing, filming, constructing, film. It's gonna be a bit of a pain in the ass. Don't really want to do that, so yeah, I'm going to see how this goes. I wasn't going to film this, I was going to film the after, in which I place the sub and then place the sub box in the room and, you know, mess around with the settings and stuff. But I thought I might as well film this part. Okay, on with construction. Speaker right there in the corner keeping me company and back to the music. Pause. All right, so I've got these two panels sorted. Countersunk, nice thick screws. Just a few more panels to go. The guy that dropped these off, he had to go to Scotland next. Scotland. All right, anyway, let's continue. I've got to move this lot out now and somehow fix the other panel to it. Couldn't agree more. All right, third panel's on. And to be honest, this is looking a little bit bigger than my previous box was. So that's good. What next? What next? Well, we have more panels. All right, so top and bottom panels were cut to the wrong size. So I've trimmed them. Tried another layout for the box, but that didn't work. So now we have sawdust and glue, which makes filler to fill these screw holes. Not really a problem because it's wood and it's an easy fix. And there we go, rather than going on the edge. That's how it's gonna fit. And it's gonna be the same for the top. Okay, here we are. This is what we've done so far. Sealed everything. Apart from the top, which I'm gonna do soon, I'm making the holes for the ports, which is why I've moved these screws. There was a screw there, there was a screw there. Moved it to the side. Same with that one. And I've put one in the middle. So we now have three instead of two. So they're gonna be tube ports, six inches. Don't know if you can tell, but that's six inches for both of them. And the tubes are gonna be 40 inches long, which is as long as that. So the entire length of the box, they're gonna be sticking out by about six, maybe seven inches, cause you wanna leave that same sort of a distance. So they get proper airflow. Okay, I've got music playing, but I don't think it matters cause this is kind of fun. Can't even hear the music. Might be a while. I should probably do this with two hands. Got to prevent copyright. Decent song though. Okay, we've uh, pause the music. We've got the holes drilled, which is nice. So that drill right there was getting so hot, I realized at one point I couldn't put my little finger on the handle. I lifted my finger up because I thought, no, nah, I'm not gonna put it there. Then I realized this thing's hot. But yeah, managed. That drill is actually pretty capable. This building that I'm in, all the joists, all the screws, 
I'm pretty sure 95% of the screws and those are a lot of screws that went into this place were put in using that. Anyway, now I think it's time to try to fit the ports, which is going to be fun. Also, I'm going to be putting stuffing inside of this loft insulation, which I've got to go get at some point. Not right now, because it's half one in the morning. I thought I'd turn this video into a driving video, randomly, out of nowhere. Kind of the wrong time of day to go, but you know, had to be done. Can't do it at two in the morning. All right, the bus is gone, that's a little less noisier. Talking about noise, there's gonna be a bit of road noise, so I might run a high pass. Also, the car's a little loud. It's been a while since I've gone this direction, so I'm kind of rusty on the directions. Try not to get a copyright strike, but uh, I think that's what we're going for. Should be enough, I reckon. One of these. See, if I could fit a sub into the back of the car, I would. I guess I probably could put subs in this car, but I don't really want it. All right, off we go again. This time, this time the sun is behind us, which is nice. All right, so there we have it. That's what I went and picked up. Somewhere along the bottom there, it says itch free. I got some of this last time and that's what I used and it worked well. And I'm gonna stick it on using this stuff. I've had that for about five years. Originally, I got about four of these to do something with, and that is one of the last ones. I think it's about half full. All right, so this is how the parts are gonna go. Like that. Right now, they're roughly nine inches out of the top and nine inches from the bottom. So I'm gonna push them in a little bit more. Also, I need to add some sealant to them and the box. So here we have the ports and the straps. So I don't know if you can tell, but there's a bit of a gap between the straps and the wood. MDF. Some people don't class MDF as wood. But yeah, there's a bit of a gap. So what I've been doing is using this saw right here, manually sawing spacers. So I've got two long ones here. They need to be sawn in half, but they are gonna go underneath there, then underneath the straps because as you can see a bit of a gap bit of a gap that's how they're meant to be but yeah so yeah manually sawing that's always fun especially when it's something so small and narrow so i've glued in the spaces as you can see so between the tubing and the straps there could be a chance of vibration so to prevent any of those noises what i used in my driving rig setup which if you haven't seen check it out we have that in a tube. So I'm gonna take a layer of that and put it between the tubing and the straps. Now between the tubing and the back of the box, there's a slight gap, which I'm gonna fill using the insulation. Why does this all have to be so heavy for? All right, so what you saw previously was a temporary placement of the baffles. And this is what we've got going on. So these straps, I'm gonna have the rubber tubing underneath them. That should prevent any vibrations, if there are any. By the way, it's 2.30 in the morning. The next day. All right then, that's these guys fastened in. Fastened in nicely. Oh yeah, by the way, washers. Washers come in handy. So I'm not too sure if I'm able to show you this, but they're solid. Absolutely solid. If they were fastened to the side of a building, you'd be able to climb up them. But I probably wouldn't do that just in case they come out. Now, the only thing I'm not looking forward to doing is sealing the baffle. Because the baffle is going to need sealing. Um, I'm going to have to put it all on and then somehow crawl through the hole and manage to do it somehow. Okay, day three. And this is what we've got left of the insulation. Got some more sealant here for the baffle. And that's what the inside of the box looks like. So the ports are free to breathe. 
Now you might be looking at this and thinking that's a lot of insulation. Well, have you seen my previous box? Go find my older vids and have a look at that box. That is what is going to be replaced. So I dragged this all the way into my room. It's so much easier working on carpet. Easier on the knees, easier if you want to lay down for whatever reason. Nicked this. Speaker terminal connection, terminal connection, whatever that's called. I got two of those from some speaker cabinets I blew up probably five or six years ago. I tried to do smoke rings with those speakers. Yeah, driving rig setup. Check that out if you haven't seen that already. So I did made that like two months ago. Time flies, not too sure. One month ago, whatever. Anyway, this entire thing barely fits under this bed right here. Just about fits. Loft bed. Right, so now I've got to flip this entire thing around and sort out the baffle area as well as connect some wiring to that. I'll be honest, the only thing I've done a quick dirty job on is that. I'm gonna be connecting those to the eight gauge wiring. And here we have some of the wiring. That's only four meters, but it's pure copper. And you can tell by the weight. Actually come to think of it, the floor's concrete, so you can't really tell, but that's he it's heavy. Okay, she is going mental and I've got the speaker wired up. This is all sorted out. If it sounds like garbage, I am going to throw it all away, except for the sub. Now, I just need to place it and eventually test it out. But it's 5.30 in the morning right now, so I'm going to call it a night. Either way, the SMD now has a house and this has been fun. I will catch you in the next one.